continuing our study of criteria to decide whether a series is convergent or not, now we're going to talk about the ratio test, which, which will turn out to be one of the most uh, useful and versatile um, criterion to decide about the convergence of a series. One of the first kind of series that we looked at and where it was easy to decide the convergence was geometric series. In other words, things of the form a constant times power of a fixed number. Um, so in standard form A times R to the n minus 1, where R is the so-called common ratio. And we take the series with this general term, and the series is convergent exactly when the common ratio has absolute value strictly less than 1. So this common ratio, by definition, is just the uh, ratio of two consecutive terms, something of the form a n plus 1 over a n, where the sequence a n is um, the sequence of general term of the series. So by definition of the common ratio, uh, this a n plus 1 over a n, in the case of a geometric series, is a constant r, and we have convergence exactly when this constant is less than 1 in absolute value. So if we look at this um, ratio of two consecutive terms, we might ask, okay, if the asymptotic behavior is similar to that of a geometric series, in other words, if the limit of this ratio as n goes to infinity is r, then maybe uh, for n large we have a behavior that is similar to that of a geometric series. And so in terms of the convergence of the series, maybe we can expect that it will behave similarly to a geometric series of common ratio r. So, um, in other words, we, the basic idea behind the ratio test is to look at the asymptotic behavior of this ratio of two consecutive terms, a n plus 1 over a n, and see if we can compare with a geometric series. So if we um, carry this analysis, as we will do in a moment when we prove the ratio test, um, the result we obtain is this CRM, the so-called ratio test, which tells us that if we look at the absolute value of this um, ratio a n plus 1 over a n between two consecutive terms of the general term of the series we're studying. And if um, this absolute value of the ratio has a limit, and this limit is strictly less than 1, then the series is absolutely convergent. So this is a criterion for absolute convergence, which of course is stronger than convergence. So this is similar to the behavior of a geometric series, right? If this ratio uh, goes to a limit less than 1, in the case of a geometric series, uh, this ratio would be constant, then we would have convergence when this uh, constant is less than 1. Here we are looking at the limit, and when it's less than 1, we have convergence. If the limit is greater than 1, or goes to infinity, then the series is divergent. Again, if it was the case of a um, geometric series, and um, then, then this ratio is constant, if this constant is greater than 1, then we have a divergent series. And we should point out that uh, if the limit of this common ratio is exactly 1, then we cannot conclude anything. The reason why it's inconclusive uh, is pretty clear from simple examples. Take, for instance, a series from 1 to infinity of 1 over n square. Uh, this is a convergent p-series, because p is 2, which is strictly greater than 1. And for that convergent series, if we look at this ratio of two consecutive terms, a n plus 1 over a n, uh, then we get uh, n over n plus 1 squared, and this clearly goes to 1. So this is an example where we have a limit of this ratio is 1, and the series is convergent. On the other end, if we look at the series of uh, 1 over n, that's a divergent p-series, right, where p equals 1. Uh, and similarly, if we take the ratio a n plus 1 over a n, we get n over n plus 1, which also has limit 1. So now we have an example where the limit of the ratio is 1, and the series is divergent. So you see that when the limit is 1, we could have a convergent series, we could have a divergent series. In other words, the test is inconclusive and you need to use a different criterion to study the convergence of a series 
when the uh, limit of the ratio n plus 1 over an is 1. Now let's turn to the proof. Why is that true? Uh, as I just pointed out before we stated the result, the basic idea is to look at the asymptotic behavior of this ratio and use that to compare with a uh, geometric series. So let's start with uh, the case where the limit is less than 1. Then if L, the limit of this absolute value of the ratio n plus 1 over an is less than 1, I can find the number r that is strictly bet between L and 1. And because uh, the sequence, absolute value of an plus 1 over an, uh, has limit L, I can make sure that for indices large enough, this ratio is less than r, because it's going to be as close as I want to L, in particular less than r. And so that means that starting for this capital N, um, where, where I have this inequality, I can say that A indexed by capital N plus 1 is less than R A capital N, and similarly A indexed by capital N plus 2 is less than R times the absolute value of A capital N plus 1, and so on. But you see that uh, if A capital N plus 1 is less than R A capital N, and a indexed by n plus 2 is less than r a indexed by n plus 1, since a indexed by n plus 1 is less than r a indexed by n, then I can compound these uh, inequalities, and uh, a indexed by n plus 2 is less than r times r times a indexed by capital N, so I get that this is less than r square a indexed by capital N. Similarly, A indexed by N plus 3 is less than R A indexed by N plus 2, the previous one, which we have shown to be less than R square A indexed by N, so we get that A indexed by N plus 3 is less than R cube A indexed by N. And by an immediate induction, we see that A indexed by N plus K in absolute value is less than R to the K A indexed by capital N. So now, r is a number less than 1, and what we have on the right-hand side of this last inequality is the general term of a geometric series of common ratio r, which is less than 1. Therefore, uh, we see that because this geometric series of common ratio r is convergent, it's a convergent geometric series, um, then by comparison, we can conclude that the series from 1 to infinity of this absolute value of A indexed by capital N plus K is convergent. But that's really just the series of absolute value of An, where we start at capital N plus 1. But if this is convergent, then adding just the first few terms, specifically the first capital N terms, is not going to change the convergence, we just add a finite number of terms then we conclude that uh, the series from 1 to infinity of absolute value of an is convergent. In other words, series of an is absolutely convergent. Turning to the second case, where the limit is greater than 1, well, you can probably guess what we're going to do, something very similar. Uh, we pick an r that is between l and 1, and we're going to compare uh, our series with... Um, the geometric series of common ratio R, which is this time going to be divergent. Specifically, since uh, L is the limit of our ratio, for indices large enough, we can make this ratio greater than R, because we can make it as close as we want to capital L. And therefore, uh, just with the same argument that we went through uh, in case 1, we get that for every integer k, positive integer k, we get that the absolute value of a indexed by capital N plus k is greater than r to the k multiplied by the absolute value of a indexed by capital N. But now the sequence on the right on the right hand side, uh, if r is greater than 1, then r to the k goes to infinity. And therefore, absolute value of a indexed by capital N plus k is a sequence that goes to infinity as well, because it is greater than the sequence going to infinity. And so that means that the absolute values, the sequence of absolute value of the general term an 
goes to infinity. But then that means that definitely the uh, general term an has to be divergent because if the absolute value goes to positive infinity, that means um, the um, terms an are um, either always positive large or negative large or alternating between positive large and negative large. In any case, they do not they do not approach a fixed value. And if the sequence of general term an is divergent, in particular it is not converging to zero, and therefore by the nth term test we can conclude that the series is divergent.